All right, good evening. It's Word Wednesday time. I hope everybody has had their dinner and ready for some time in the Word. I got my timekeeper and my church mother with me this evening. Guess who I've got with me, y'all? None other than Kayla Carter. Come on, say hey, Kayla. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, we're just getting started, giving everyone time to join, amen, as we're getting started with our Winter Word Wednesday. We're continuing with our NAV 2-7 series, Growing Strong in God's Family, Rooted and Built Up in Him, amen. And what's one of our main uh, memory verse scriptures that we've been covering over the last several days, weeks, and months, uh, I'm going to see... Who, um, who recalls it, it's our primary anchor scripture. And uh, I'm going to get Kayla to even uh, read it for us, not read it for, but give us the actual scripture. Kayla, what's that passage of scripture? Colossians 2. Uh-huh, Colossians 2. And then which verses? Uh, 5 to 6. Yep, and then the last one is? All right, now, now you got to say it with some power now, Kayla. Come on, come on. What's the, what's the memory verse scripture? What is it? Uh, five, three, six, and seven. Yep, yeah, but you got to say it with some power. You got to say Colossians 2, 5, 6, and 7. Come on, you can say that. Come on, say it with me. Colossians 2, 5, 6, and 7. All right, all right. Ooh, you said that with some power, Kayla. All right. A young people's department don't play, y'all. All All right, y'all got to come ready when the young people's department uh, is apart. Amen. But we've been we've been covering and talking about in our NAV two seven series. We always recap every each and every uh, Wednesday that we come together that um, we remember and recall that passage of scripture as we are growing strong in God's family, being rooted. And built up in him. How do we do that? We do that. By memorizing this very passage of scripture. Colossians 2. 6 and 7 says. Therefore just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord. Continue to walk in him. What did that say Kayla? It said to continue to do what? Walk in him. Oh come on. You got to say that with some power Kayla. You got to continue to what? Walk in him. Did it say sleep in him? It said what? What did it say? Walk in him. Walk in him. Ooh, that, you said that was some power, Kayla. I felt that right there. Amen. All right. Well, we thank God for each and every one joining us. Amen. As you're joining us, give us a hello and a God bless you. And our junior church mother will be giving you hellos and God bless you. All right. I see we had uh, First Lady join us. Say God bless you, First Lady. You want to say hey to First Lady? Go right ahead. Hi, First Lady. All right. Now, looks like we also had a... Uh, uh, young adult missionary Lydia Williams, George. Come on, you gonna say hello to uh, young adult missionary Lydia Williams? Hi, Lydia Williams. <laughs> you know who that is, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Y'all been y'all been getting together on the Zoom and all that good stuff, haven't you? Amen. But Colossians two six through seven, just as Kayla said it, that as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to what walk in Him. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't stop right there. It says. To be rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith. And overflowing with thankfulness. So that's our umbrella scripture as we continue our Winter Word Wednesday. We've been talking about that. We're still in our green book. Growing strong in God's family. Rooted and built up in him. Uh, and, and we're covering uh, pages. We're starting page 80 tonight, y'all. If you've got your manual, if you don't, we'll be covering the passages of scripture that are very important to our study tonight. Uh, so what we've got to understand, what we've got to grab hold of is this understanding that as we're growing strong in the faith, we've got to be rooted and then we've got to be built up. It's not enough to have deep roots. Uh, we've got to also be built up. Amen. Come on, say built up, Caleb. Built Amen. That's it. Go ahead, girl. Good job. So we've got to be built up in him. We're not looking uh, to just uh, be rooted and, you know, kind of in private underground with this thing. But we're looking to be built up also. Amen. Amen. So as we're continuing on tonight, you all remember what we've been talking about over the past days, weeks and even months. 
we've been covering uh, the wheel, the composite wheel. And we talked about covering some of our, uh, the understanding of uh, effective communication last week. Amen. Praise God, Evangelist Nikki joining us. Come on, say hey to Evangelist L Nikki, Kayla. Go ahead and say hey. Nikki. All right. All right. Yeah, come on. You got to say it with some power. You know, Evangelist Nikki, she don't she don't like that quiet, those quiet greetings. She like to be recognized loud. And, you know, come on. You say, hey, to Evangelist Nikki, go ahead. Good evening, Miss Evangelist um, Nikki. There you go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So uh, as we're covering this tonight, we talked last week about effective communication, about how poor communication was disjointed. And my goodness, uh, I bet if we all be honest, uh, even though the initial focus was just talking about our communication with God, I'm pretty sure we saw some of those um, uh, examples uh, in our day-to-day -day life of poor and effective communication. Poor communication being a communication that's disjointed, where people are just waiting to talk rather than listening and responding. You know, uh, but effective communication with God is hearing from him and then not and then also uh, connecting with your what you're hearing in his word uh, with your prayer. We're not hearing one thing and then going off and just praying something that's on our uh, spiritual wish list. No, uh, even something that's on our physical wish list. No, uh, effective communication has it all together as we hear we speak and, and, and that kind of communication causes effective communication to take place. Now, that's, that's the, 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 the power of prayer, the power of effective communication and prayer. Now, one of the things that we wanted to talk about tonight was the word. Come on, y'all say the word, the word with me. Come on, Kayla, you can say, say the word with me. All right, come on now. You got to say it with some power, Kayla. Come on, you got to say the word. The word. Okay, all right. You getting there. You getting there. We, you know, we, we'll we work on that. Y'all missed it. Kayla Kayla was saying it right, but then she get on camera and get all get all quiet on me. But that's all right. <laughs> Amen. But the word, as we remember with our composite wheel, was a part of our vertical dimension. Prayer keeping us connected with God, his word keeping us uh, rooted and grounded. And uh, what we are covering tonight uh, is right here on page 80 of our manual. God bless you, Mother Daisy. Good to see you. Come on, Kayla. You want to say hey to Mother Daisy real quick? Hey, Miss Daisy. All right. Yeah, yeah. She knows Miss Daisy. Yeah. Good to see you. All right. Well, as we're covering that tonight, just as we covered effective communication, <clears throat> excuse me. Effective communication last week, we're covering God's word in our lives, amen, and how it comes together. As we're reading in our manual, we understand that a sword is designed to be used skillfully in battle, both as an offensive and a defensive weapon. God has equipped you with a tremendous instrument for spiritual battle, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6 and 7. Come on, somebody grab your Ephesians 6 and 7. My whole armor, folk. Come on, y'all know when we get to Ephesians 6, we're likely going to be talking about the whole armor of God. One of those pieces of the armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Uh, we understand that this weapon, this piece of the armor that God has given us is not just for defense, but also for offense. Not just for offense, but also for defense. Amen. Amen. God wouldn't give us something that was one dimensional. Come on here. Come on, somebody that's been remembering uh, our, our, our classes over the last several weeks. Amen. He wouldn't cause it to be one dimensional. Come on, Kayla, say one dimensional. One dimensional. That's right. Yeah, tell them, Kayla. No, we don't have a desire. Uh, God doesn't have a desire for us to be one dimensional. So he's not going to give us a one dimensional piece of armor. No, no, no. Examine Psalms 19, 7 through 8. In the Old Testament, there are synonyms for the Bible. 
uh, you'll see references like uh, words like ordinances, decrees, promises, and so on. According to these two verses, uh, we want uh, uh, God wants us to understand something about his word. Let's grab Psalms 19, 7 through 8. I'm going to read it for you. We got our New Testament in Ephesians 6. Now we're going to jump back to Psalm 19 in the Old Testament. And we're going to see exactly what's going on here. Psalm 19 verses 7 through 8. It reads, this is the Berean Study Bible translation. It reads, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making wise the simple. Verse 8, the precepts. Come on, can to say precepts? Precepts. Come on, we can say that with pop with precepts. With precepts. There we go. That's it. All right. There's Mother Terry. Come on, Kayla. Say hey to Mother Terry real quick. Hey, Miss Terry. Yeah, good to see you, Mother Terry. All right. Now, the precepts of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Come on, somebody say the word. Amen. Come on, Kayla. Say the word. The word. That's it. All right. Yeah, you're saying it with power now. There you go. All right. We're not saying it sleepy. We're saying it with power. Amen. So as we're looking at this, we're understanding that the word is not one dimensional. The word has been prepared as a piece of the armor in Ephesians 6. Not only as a defensive weapon, but an offensive weapon. Yes, not only just an off, not just an offensive weapon, but also a defensive weapon. What am I getting at? Uh, the word is not only for offense, where we busy just beating folk with the word all day. What well, the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. All right, thank God for the Bible. But the thing that I I notice so often about those that are uh, uh, so busy using the, the word as an offensive weapon, uh, they, they're very seldomly turning it back on themselves, Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. Who, who's ready to, uh, to cut themselves with a sword? No. Uh, in most instances, you're trying to keep that thing away from you. Amen. Amen. But the scripture says that the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And, and it goes both ways, amen? Uh-huh, we got to, what I'm saying? As we're using the word offensively, we got to make sure that uh, we don't allow it to uh, be just as dangerous and cut ourselves while we're busy trying to cut somebody else. No, we need to put that thing on the enemy, amen? When Jesus was in the wilderness, he used the word in a twofold fashion, not just only uh, defensively, as uh, the enemy began to make suggestions and he would return with the word, but also he used it offensively and he would put the word on the enemy and say, the word declares thus and so. You're not going to back me in a corner. You're not going to cause me to make unwise and foolish decisions. Uh, I'm going to put the word uh, to work. Amen. Come on, somebody say, let the word work. Amen. Amen. So as we're understanding God's word in our life, I like how Psalms 19 gives us full understanding. Verses seven and eight says that it's perfect and it will revive the soul. Amen. Uh, the testimony of the Lord to understand it is perfect. That is trustworthy and it revives the soul and it makes wise the simple. Come on, somebody say amen right there. Amen. It makes wise the simple. Amen. You, you don't have to worry uh, about uh, whether you lack wisdom or not. Bible says if you lack wisdom in James, ask him because he gives it freely. The word will make the wise simple. It'll revive the soul. Not only that, it's going to bring joy to the heart. It's going to cause you to be radiant and it's going to add light to the eyes. Those who spend time in God's word, those who use it and don't use it one dimensionally. You have a radiance that people will be drawn to. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. Come on, say amen right there, Kayla. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You got some radiance. Yes, you do. That people are drawn to. Yeah, you're not going to be uh, able to hide that thing. You got to let your light so shine. Amen. Come on. Are you going to let your light shine, Kayla? All right. All right. I, I believe I believe Kayla got it, y'all. Uh, I don't know. Now, some of y'all, y'all got to chime in now. I got to make sure you got it. 
I got to make sure you got it. But as we're reading this passage, where the word grounds us, where prayer and effective communication connects us, God wants us to grab hold of this word. No, it's not just um, uh, some, some positive affirmations. It's not just some uh, do's and don'ts. No, but his word brings life. Amen. Amen. You will never see his word do anything but bring life. Amen. Uh, anything that the Lord is involved in brings life. Amen. That you know this by understanding the tactics of the enemy. Bible says a thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Amen. Anything that's bringing uh, any kind of death and destruction, we know that's the work of the enemy. Amen. Amen. But God is causing life to take place. Even in a situation that might seem like uh, it's destroyed, no, it'll bring forth life. If you've ever seen a forest on fire, you would think there's no turning back from that. No coming back for that, for that forest. But the thing that's interesting is that fire can cause the ground to be fertilized and it'll grow back stronger than it was. Amen. Come on, somebody and say, thank God. Amen. For him working things out. Amen. Amen. So as we're covering this tonight, we have to understand that his word is what grounds us. His word is what causes us to stay connected. Amen. His word is the very area that if we are lacking, it can give us wisdom. Amen. It can cause uh, the simple to become wise. Amen. 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 Talk to somebody that's been spending time in the word. Amen. Uh, you'll be like, my goodness, this don't even sound like the same person. Amen. Why? Because the word will make wise the simple. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, as we've been covering uh, this, uh, we got another illustration. We understand that his word, as we hear it, as we read it, as we study and apply it, as we memorize it and meditate on it, we get a full understanding of his word. Amen. Uh, to hear it. Romans 10 and 17. Let me put that one uh, in, your, in your hearing real quick. Romans 10 and 17. I'm going to read that for you here real quick. Romans 10 and verse 17. All right, Caleb, what is our, what's our passage for tonight? Romans 10 and what the, what's the verse? 17. 17, all right. It reads, consequently, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. By the word of Christ, the Berean translation states, amen. All right, so as we're hearing, we're hearing by the word of God, we get faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. And with faith, we can move mountains. Amen. Amen. The girls have these little necklaces that's got a mustard seed in it to make us remember. All you need is faith. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. If, if it seems insurmountable, it's time to put some faith on that thing. Amen. Amen. Because the faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. Somebody say amen right there. Not only that, uh, not only as we as we hear the word, but as we continuously read it. Revelations one and three. Come on, let's read that together. Revelations. I'm going to have Kayla give us the passage real quick. What is it real quick, Kayla? It's, it's what? All right. And the third verse, it says, blessed in the, is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear and obey what is written in it because the time is near. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like revelations, don't it, y'all? That's some get ready scripture right there. Blessed are those that read it aloud. Amen. And those that hear and obey. His word. Amen. It's important that we hear it. Not just read it, but read it 
and hear it. Amen. As we hear it, it causes us to obey. Amen. We got to stop right here, y'all, because I, I understand I'm trying to I'm trying to get it to a, a stopping point here because we're going to have to pick up more of this next week. But I want to read these last three scriptures for you as we wrap up tonight. Amen. Not only do we want to read and hear, but we also want to study and apply Acts 17 and 11. I want you to hear this. Acts, the 17th chapter. Kayla, what's our, what's our scripture verse here on, on this one real quick? Acts 17. All right. Acts 17. Praise God, trustee Rodney Thompson. Good to see you, trustee. Amen. Acts 17. I'm going to read verse 11 for you. Amen. It says, now the Bereans were more noble minded than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if these teachings were true. Amen. Yes, indeed. We got to study and apply. Yeah, it's good to read. It's good to hear. But we got to study and apply. Amen. Let's keep on rolling here. Psalms. Which one is that there, Kayla? That's Psalms. I'm trying to make sure I'm reading that out there. Psalms 119, 9 and 11. Psalms 119, 9 and 11. One of the longest books of the Bible. Psalms 119. What's our, what's our, uh, our, our book and verse real quick, Kayla? Psalms 119. All right. Now I'm going to read verses 9 and 11. Thank you so much. What's my time, Kayla? I got my timekeeper here tonight. She's going to keep me on point. What's our time, uh, Kayla? Where are we at? 721. All right. All right. We got to make sure we're staying on time here. All right. Now it reads... Verse 9 of Psalm 119, 9 and 11, it says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. Amen. We got to memorize that thing. Now, all right, I'm going to help somebody that's getting a little worried just because we said uh, the M word, memory. Amen. Amen. As we read the word, you'll be surprised what you're committing to memory without even realizing it. It means we're taking it into full consider consideration. And last but not least for tonight, Psalm 12 and 3. Amen. We want to not only memorize but meditate, amen? Is that Psalm 12, verse 3? We all over the book of Psalms tonight. All right, what's our book in verse, Kayla? Psalms 12. All right, Psalms 12, we're going to read verse 3. It says, may the Lord cut off all flattering lips and every boastful tongue, amen? Amen. And not only that, what's that, Kayla? What is that passage right there? I want to make sure Psalms 123, right? Meditate. Yep, to meditate. And what's that, Psalms? What? What's that number? I want to make sure that I, it's kind of small there. I want to make sure you, you pull that one up for me. Is that Psalms? What's that, Psalms what? Psalms 123. All right, is it 123 or is it 1 and 23? I'm trying to make sure myself then. Oh, it's 1 and 23. Yeah, Psalms 1 verses 2 and 3, right? All right. So now, let's jump back to Psalms 1. Not Psalms 12 and 3, it's Psalms 1, verses 2 and 3. It reads, to delight in, in, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Come on, somebody say day and night. Come on, Kayla, say day and night. Day and night. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it, it reads on, it says, he is like a tree planted by streams of water, Yielding its fruit in due season, whose leaf does not wither, and who prospers in all he does. Come on, somebody need to say, God, I need to prosper in all I do. Amen. Amen. In my schoolwork. Come on, say amen right there, Kayla, right? Amen. Amen. Not in our schoolwork, in our professional work. In our in our um, in our various uh, work around our various um, personal lives, Amen, Amen. Whatever we do, I like the King James version better, Amen. Not to preach better, Kayla. I need to read that one, don't I? Amen. I need to read that here. Let me read it for you. Uh, Psalm one, verse three. 
It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Come on, say whatsoever. Whatsoever. Uh-huh, yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, anytime somebody give you a what, you say whatsoever, amen? Yeah, whatsoever, no. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. Why? Because I'm delighting myself in the law of the Lord. And I meditate on it day and night. Praise his name. I'm not, I'm not meditating on uh, the last of us. Amen. Uh huh. I'm not meditating on uh, the walking dead or whatever the, the latest show is. You know, the last of us. That's the new one, right? Yeah, that's, that's, I'm not, I'm not meditating on Cuphead and uh, what, what's the other one you were just watching there? No, no, no. I'm not meditating on SpongeBob only. No, I'm not meditating on on uh, whatever, on a, a, a Judge Judy. No, no. Oh, I'm messing with somebody's spirit now. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, I'm not meditating on uh, the Real Housewives. No, I'm not meditating even on the Super Bowl. Somebody put their trust in the Super Bowl and mess around and lost a little something probably. Lord have mercy. I ain't gonna mess with your spirit tonight. <laughs> yeah, you put your trust in that Super Bowl. And one of them teams, you might have lost a little something. Watch out. No, no, no. But our delight is in the law of the Lord from which we meditate day and night. As we're closing tonight, I'm going to have Caleb pray the Lord's Prayer. And as we're praying, and as we're closing, somebody that doesn't know Christ today, you need to get a hold of the, this fivefold. This is not fivefold ministry, but this is fivefold um Growth, uh, this fivefold growth illustration of reading and hearing, studying and applying, memorizing and meditating. Amen. Uh, you say, man, I don't even know where to start. You can start with this one. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you don't know Christ is your savior tonight, you can pray this prayer. Father, I know I'm a sinner. Save me right now. I'm confessing with my mouth. I'm believing in my heart that you died for my sins. And I'm asking you to save me. And I believe right now, according to your word, that I'm saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're amongst the household of faith. You just took some scripture and applied it. Come on here. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask Kayla to say the Lord's Prayer with us tonight. And as we're closing, we're going to make sure that as we continue throughout this week, that we're making all efforts to, uh, to apply his word. For his word is a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. Come on, let's pray tonight. Our Father. Our Father, which in in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God is the kingdom, pound the boy, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Come on, won't you give Kayla a big hand, y'all? Come on. All right. Thank God for Kayla uh, doing that Lord's Prayer. Amen. Applying the word. Come on, somebody. That's Luke the sixth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. I make sure I'm not giving you the wrong one. But yes, the Lord's Prayer. That's applying the word. Praise his name. Amen. Y'all give Kayla some congratulations and some encouragement right there. Amen. All right. As we're closing tonight, uh, uh, make sure that you join us every Monday for prayer at 7 p.m. We join together on our prayer call line. Get that number and join us in prayer. Amen. Join us each and every Wednesday right here as we continue our Winter Word Wednesday. Uh, as we're continuing, uh, not only that, join us as we're in service Throughout the month, amen. We're with our brothers and sisters at the church at University Place, uh, second and fourth Sunday. We had a wonderful time this past Sunday. What a wonderful time, amen. And uh, we uh, hope that you, if you're not getting, if you missed the live broadcast, you've got Facebook, you can always catch the live broadcast 
uh, replayed on Facebook. If you're not utilizing Facebook, we try to make sure we're getting it out to our uh, brothers and sisters that maybe don't utilize Facebook via YouTube also. You can join the Church Charlotte YouTube channel and get those recordings almost as soon as they're, they're, they're live and they're finished uh, going live, we try to upload them that same day. So you can see our Sunday services, you can see our Wednesday night Bible studies all together um, right there on our YouTube channel also, The Church Charlotte, amen. All right, well, you have a blessed week. We'll see you real soon, amen. Stay in contact. Have a blessed week. Declare this week blessed. It already is. Come on, somebody say, it's already blessed, amen. Amen. Kayla closed us out with the Lord's Prayer. So now we're good to go. God bless you. Missionary Marion Williams, good to see you. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. It's done, amen. And from this point forward, I'm giving God my best. Amen. Come on, Kayla. Wave bye to everybody as we're leaving. Have a blessed week. See y'all.